Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today. I learned WebGL series episode 97. This is drawing text part 4 and using glyphs. And what a glyph is, is basically a single character for each uh, texture and then rendering out. So this will be very similar to a previous texture episode uh, with using text, but now we're going to have one rendered texture per letter. So we have two new a um, uh, shaders here, one new vertex shader and one new fragment shader for rendering text. It's basically going to be as simple as possible. We're going to be setting the texture chord and the geo position. And then in here, we're going to be setting the texture and then multiplying by the color. So, very simple. We made a small change in our UI utils. And that we're checking for object key before we're uh, iterating through to try to find said object. Uh, obviously, in case the object key does not exist, as in the case of our planes that we'll be drawing our textures on for our letters, they will not have a selection color, so you will not be able to select the text. So here uh, we can just really quickly look at where that was used. That was used in here, so now you can see we'll never have an object trying to be selected and getting a null pointer on uh, length being undefined. So what is new in the application? Let's go ahead and take a look. We have just a hard-coded leather width and height uh, constants, and then we have all the lowercase letters of the alphabet and space. Um, we're basically zoomed out a little bit more, and we also have a text textures in addition to our textures object on our state application. Rename this function to knit letter textures, and then we have this text class that is going to be very similar to the cube and all the other renderables. Uh, this one's will be a little more simple though. It just has a very small position, which is uh, basically aligned with our text cords here and our indices, of course. Read and render mode, even though we don't really need those, this allows us to still not have to do null checks for these functions later on. And uh, when we are going to go ahead and do our draw, we just have those three uniforms the color, the sampler, which is the texture, and the MVP matrix as well. We're going to be looping through each letter in the state.txt for the object. So each object is going to be created with a, a sentence or whatever. And as we loop through each, we're going to do all of our normal buffering and rendering and drawing inside the list. The few uh, translations and differences from normal is we're going to go ahead and always translate on the x-coordinate by the letter indices. So we can draw out a texture and then shift it over, draw out a texture, shift it over, draw out a texture. And that'll be a uh, given. And we'll have our normal scale and regular translate as well, which happens before and after, respectively. Finally, we're always rendering a texture, so not to do any checks for this kind of thing anymore. And we're going to go ahead and just set our uh, uniform of the color as well. Uh, because we don't have a consistent spacing and we didn't really define it in a hard-coded way, we're going to go ahead and have polygon offset check for every single texture here so that we don't have any Z fighting. Uh, finally, we're going to go ahead and set the text, uh, the text to nothing if there is none. Otherwise, we're going to set it to the text. Go ahead and load up our new uh, vertex and fragment shaders, and put it under the text programs here, enable that po polygon offset fill for the Z fighting, and then you can see here we have three different objects with different colors, always using the read and render states as text, translation, the actual text it'll display, fun times, hello, and go code, and then finally here's our net letter textures, where we do what we did the other episode, but this time we're basically going to take all of the letters and create a texture for every single one. And then the generate canvas text is basically where we're actually setting that texture before we return that and then uh, use it here and on the texture ID or text image 2D. So we're going to be binding it to this texture and then putting that texture with that letter as the key so we can use them later on. And as we've shown up here, we use each of them by finding the letter in there, and then we're going to be using the texture of that letter 
as well. So it's pretty simple code, especially if you've been following along and you understand textures at this point, and you understand the uh, creation of using the canvas to generate textures and use those textures. So we can take a look at what it looks like. So you have fun times with a space here and go code and hello. And of course we can um, refresh this because my computer is slow. So there we see the application and we can check out our code. And it's, can't click it of course because it's not selectable. Anyway, uh, that's it for this episode. If you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe, like this video, share it on social media if you will. Go to programmingtil.com and sign up for my newsletter. Have a great one.